For section 3.1, we are going to be talking about classifying angles formed by two lines and a transversal. Here's the vocab words that we're going to, some of the vocab words that we're going to talk about today. So if you want to pause the screen, get this written down, and then listen to me explain, that's fine. So you're probably familiar with parallel lines and you've probably talked about them as two lines that never intersect. We actually need to make sure that we add into the definition that they're two coplanar lines that never intersect because we're going to talk about skew lines as well that are non-coplanar lines that never intersect. So if we, um, one thing I just want to mention is if you see parallel lines, um, we put these little arrows in the middle of them to uh, tell the reader that the lines are parallel, just like we do tick marks if segments are equal or arc marks if angles are equal. These little arrows on the lines is what tells the reader that the lines are in fact parallel. Um, so let's take a look over at this diagram over here so I can show you the difference between um, coplanar lines and non-coplanar lines that don't intersect. So I'm going to um, draw on here an example of parallel lines. So parallel lines need to be in the same plane and never intersect. So we could look at this line and this line as parallel. And in fact, as long as they're going in the same direction, then they're considered coplanar. So these two are on the left side of the box, going the same direction, never intersecting. Okay, these two are on the top. And there's actually like a diagonal plane you could fit through here to get um, the corners. So all four of these li green lines are considered to be parallel. So if we went ahead and looked at um, a set of skew lines, okay? So skew lines need to be in different planes, okay? And so they're gonna, it's, it's almost like there's a line drawn on the ceiling, okay? So one drawn on the ceiling and then one drawn, oops, one drawn on the floor and they're going in different directions, okay? So they're never gonna cross each other Okay, because this one is constantly stuck on the ceiling and this one is constantly stuck on the floor. So they aren't going to touch, but they also aren't coplanar. So those are considered skew lines. So they're going in different directions on different planes versus parallel lines are going in the same direction and on the same plane. Then we have parallel planes. So parallel planes would be two planes that are never going to intersect. So for instance, um, the ceiling and the floor, if we thought of this as a room, okay, those two are never going to intersect. Or maybe the left side of this box and the right side of the box, those are planes that are never going to intersect. And then you could think of the front and the back as well. Then we have a transversal, which is where we're going to spend a lot of our time today is talking about two lines and a transversal. So you see that we have these two black lines and then we have this red line going through. It's going to cross at least um, two lines. Okay, so a transversal is going to intersect at least two lines. So just have two lines and then another line drawn kind of through them and we're going to spend most of our time there. So we're going to get into like five different types of angles formed when you see two lines and a transversal drawn. In each diagram, I'm going to leave the transversal as red so that you can see it. So the first set of angles that we're going to talk about are the corresponding angles, they're called. So what I want to bring your attention to on the parallel or on the lines and the transversal is that we've got a set of four angles up here formed by this line and the transversal, and then a set of four angles down here. So you're going to see this in each of the diagrams that we've got kind of these two sets of angles. And so the angles that we're talking about corresponding, one needs to come from each of those two sets. So I'm just going to label, so I'm just going to put a little dot in one. So if we're looking at this angle in this upper set, okay, I like to think of this as in the upper left-hand corner of, the, of this set of angles. Okay, it's in the upper left. So down here in this set of angles, the corresponding angle would be the one in the upper left-hand corner of these four angles as well. Okay, so if you take a look at this, the corresponding angles are in the same relative position, so upper left-hand side of those sets. Okay, so that's one set of corresponding. 
this angle would also be corresponding with this one in the upper right hand corner. Okay, or this one would be corresponding with this one. And then those two blank ones would be corresponding as well. Okay, so we've got all sorts of sets of corresponding angles. Okay, same relative position. Alternate interior angles. So now I want to bring your attention to um, these lines again. Okay, and then we've got something that we've got the interior. So we've got between the two lines. This is considered the interior. So alternate interior angles are gonna be in the inside of those angles, okay, or in the inside of those lines. So they're on the interior of the two lines. And then they're gonna be on opposite sides of the transversal. This being one side of the transversal and then this being the other side of the transversal. So alternate interior angles, this would be an example of alternate interior angles. So inside the two lines, opposite sides of the transversal. So those two are alternate interior angles or this one and this one would be alternate interior. So they're between the two lines on opposite sides of the transversal. Alternate exterior. So now again, just like we had these two lines and then this was the interior, this is the exterior of those two lines or outside of those two lines. So now exterior angles are going to be coming from those angles. So alternate exterior angles are going to be on the outside of the two lines, okay, on opposite sides of the transversal. So this one, okay, opposite side of the transversal in our other chunk of four angles, alternate exterior. This one would be alternate exterior with this one. Then we're gonna to get to same side interior angle. So remember, this has to do with the transversal, the same side versus the alternate. So same side, sometimes called consecutive. So same side interior angle. So they're gonna be between these two lines on the same side of the transversal. So if we have this angle here, same side of the transversal, still inside the two lines. Those two are considered same side interior. Same with this one and this one. Then we have same side exterior. So again, outside of the two lines, so not between them, but on the outside of the two lines on the same side of this transversal. So these two are considered same side interior or same side exterior, and these ones are considered same side exterior. So we're just gonna go ahead and classify um, a bunch of types of angles. So let's take a look here. So I've got two lines. So L and M are my two lines. H would be considered the transversal because it's the one that's going through the two lines. So H is the transversal. Let me just get that drawn in here red like we had on the other screens. Okay, so there's your transversal. So now when we go ahead um, and talk about these types of angles, if I wanted to look at these two angles, two and seven, okay, so what would we consider angle two and angle seven to be? So they are inside of our two lines, okay, so these are your two lines again. Two and seven are in the inside of the two lines and they're on opposite sides of the transversal, so they would be considered alternate interior angles. Okay, if I moved this one here and this one here, so if we're looking at angle one and angle four. So now what I like to go through, I go through a couple of questions when I'm doing this. So I say, are they both on the inside or both on the outside? Okay, so ask yourself that question first. So are these both on the inside? No. Are they both on the outside of these two blue lines? Yes. Okay, so one and four are some type of exterior angles. Okay, so there's some type of exterior angles. Then you need to decide after you've decided that, are they on the same side 
of the transversal or are they on opposite sides of the transversal? Okay, so we, we see this transversal here. So are they on the same side of the transversal? Yes. Okay, they're both on the left side of that transversal. So these would be considered same side exterior angles. And if you go through that questioning each time when you're looking, okay, so if we had something like this, are they both inside? No. Are they both outside? Yes. So those are exterior. Are they on the same side of the transversal? No. So these are alternate exterior angles. So angle five and angle four are on opposite sides of the transversal, so they are alternate, and they're on the outside, so they're exterior. Okay, um, or if you had this, two and three, those are both on the inside of the two lines, and they're on the same side of the transversal. So these would be same side interior. You can also get where they're not both on the inside or not both on the outside. So the answer to are these are, are these on the inside? No. Are they on the outside? No. Okay. So then you see, are they in the same relative spot? Okay. And same relative spot means like if I were to do this and I just pick this whole chunk of angles up and move it down, is that in the same spot? So yes, it's on the same spot of the bottom four angles. So one and three are considered to be corresponding. They are in corresponding spots. Okay, so one and three are corresponding angles. Okay, then what about if we had something like this? Okay, are they both on the inside? No. Are they both on the outside? No. Okay, one's outside, one's inside. Are they in corresponding spots? The five is in the upper right-hand side, where the three is in the upper left-hand side, so they're not in corresponding spots. So angle three and angle five actually have no relationship. So these would be none. And then you can get some still that are within the same set of four. Instead of being on the two lines, one angle formed with angle L and one angle formed with angle M, these are ones that we learned in, for, in chapter one when they're across from each other like this, that would be alternate, or sorry, that would be vertical angles when they're across from each other. So two and five would be considered vertical. Or if they're next to each other like that, that would be considered a linear pair. So five and six would be considered a linear pair or supplementary angles. So they have to be formed by the transversal and the line, okay, in the two sets to be one of the new ones from today. These being same side exterior alternate exterior, okay? And if they're formed within the same set, then they could be vertical or a linear pair.